Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the Train Aid HQ once again. In today's video, uh, we are going to be looking at the level four IQA qualification and we are going to be investigating criteria nine, which is the live observation, which is an observation of you within your candidate's uh, IQA role. Uh, you are going to be observed by a qualified IQA. And this video is investigating the observation report that is to be completed by the qualified IQA um, observing the candidate IQA undertaking the qualification. If you haven't already done so, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel to find out the latest alerts and team news uh, from the train aid uh, team. Okay, so in terms of the IQA qualification uh, for unit two, we have 14 criteria to complete. Now, criteria number nine is the, the observation criteria. So if you're undertaking the IQA qualification, you have to observe your two assessors within their assessing or their teaching or their training role. Okay, so you have to observe them uh, once each. Okay, so there are two observations to complete. Uh, one of these observations must be observed by a qualified IQA. Okay, so the qualified IQA is going to observe how you communicate uh, with your assessor, how you monitor them, how you provide feedback to them. Okay, following uh, the observation. Now, I'll just show you the, the observation report in a moment. Okay, um, now you can be observed by a qualified IQA within your organization. That is absolutely fine. If you don't have a qualified IQA, no problem. One of the team here at TrainAid can um, organize an observation with you. That is no problem. Simply get in contact with the team here. Okay. But just to re reiterate that uh, criteria, the criteria nine of uh, the IQA qualification is you have to have two observations. Uh, one observation on each assessor and one of these observations must be observed by a qualified IQA. So we're just going to stroll, uh, scroll down um, to look at the, the IQA observation template. This is our, obs our own um, observation template, but please bear in mind, if you do have your own internal IQA observation form, okay, that's fine. The qualified IQA can, can use that. So in terms of this observation form, this needs to be completed by a qualified IQ. I'm just going to explain the, the different sections in turn, just to make it nice and, and easy for the qualified IQA to complete. So just at the top here, we have the, the, the details um, that need to be completed first. So we have the candidate IQA name. This is uh, the person who is undertaking the IQA qualification. So this is a person who is going to be observed. So we need to input the name there. On the right hand side, we have the qualified IQA uh, name here. This is the observer. So this is the person who is observing uh, the candidate IQA. So we need the, the details in there. So your name. Um, if you are a qualified IQA, okay, um, observing the candidate IQA, please do send train aid a copy of your certificate so we can save this to the candidate IQA's, uh, IQA's folder. Um, we have the observation date, so please include the date and the time of the observation, okay, and also the location as well. So where where the observation is taking place. So uh, when um, the candidate IQA is is being observed, okay, please put in the the observation uh, location. That's very important. Um, the assessment methods used is going to be an observation followed by uh, questions as well. So please leave that section as it is. And please do describe the purpose of the observation. So what will the candidate IQA be observing? So this is the candidate IQA observing the assessor. 
uh, within their teaching or assessing role. So this could be the assessor conducting uh, a one-to-one -one assessment. It could be seeing the assessor chair a meeting or a standardization meeting, or um, the candidate IQA could observe a teacher uh, teaching to a class and the candidate IQA is going to be writing an observation report. OK, so quite simply, the the candidate IQA is, is seeing the assessor within their day to day teaching or assessing role as well. So please do provide a description here on what you the the qualified IQA will be observing. OK, when you're observing the, the candidate IQA there. So just moving on to the, the assessment criteria, just on the left-hand side, we have some uh, questions there to give the candidate IQA um, just some points on, on how to break down and structure the observation and what you should be, should be looking for. And on the right-hand side, we have the comments to be written by the qualified IQA. So these comment boxes can either be handwritten or they can be typed. So the first question is, did the candidate IQA brief the assessor about the purpose of the observation and discuss the activity? So for, for that key question there, um, you're looking to perhaps write, did the um, candidate IQA uh, speak with the assessor before the assessment or the lesson about what they are going to observe, perhaps show them perhaps the observation criteria um, and just to check in with the assessor, was the assessor comfortable uh, with being observed? Did they they understand uh, what they are going to be uh, observed on there? Uh, second key co question is, was uh, the assessor given an opportunity to ask any questions about the assessment by the candidate um, IQA? So once again, that question is still in the briefing stage between the candidate I'm candidate IQA and the assessor uh, before the the observation stage is there an opportunity for the assessor to to ask any questions and to clarify uh, anything there the question uh the third question is did the candidate IQA remain objective at all times and monitor the progress of the assessor throughout the uh, assessment so this is very much the observation the candidate IQA very much takes a back seat and they must uh, observe the assessor within their teaching or assessing role obviously they they shouldn't be interfering they should be um focused on observing the assessor the candidate IQA will have a, an observation report, perhaps some criteria and standards, and also just making a judgment on how they are performing as well. So that is uh, quite a key question there. Question um, number four is, did the candidate IQA judge the assessor accurately against the appropriate assessment criteria? So that question is looking just at the assessment criteria and standards. So um, is the candidate IQA making a fair judgment on the assessor? Are they being um, are they being correct in terms of their judgments? Okay, so what they're observing, is it in fact uh, a pass? Is it meeting the criteria? In other words, is the assessor performing their role correctly and to the standards? Uh, the next question is, uh, did the candidate IQA notify the assessor when they had seen enough of the assessments? OK, so uh, when a candidate IQA is, is perhaps observing an assessor, um, they could observe them for perhaps uh, perhaps an hour. That is sufficient. No more than that. So if the candidate IQA is perhaps observing a teacher, seeing perhaps an hour's lesson is is enough there okay but they did they notify them when they had seen enough of the assessments now the tail end of the questions is did the candidate iqa provide feedback to the assessor within a quiet setting so hopefully after um the observation the the candidate iqa can provide feedback within perhaps a private room or a quiet setting so they can give some one-to-one -one feedback. 
Um, did the candidate IQA check the assessor's paperwork? Okay, so it could be perhaps checking um, their their feedback. Um, have they uh, written um, any type of work or criteria uh, correctly, especially if it's a one-to-one -one assessment there? Um, did the candidate IQA provide constructive feedback to the assessor as well? So were there um did you did you see um that the candidate iqa has perhaps provided constructive feedback to the assessor um has the candidate iqa let the assessor know um that the the observation was a pass for example and just a few questions um did the candidate uh iqa provide suitable smart targets for the assessor to follow so following the observation um, has the candidate IQA given some targets for the assessor to improve upon uh, their practice? Um, did the candidate IQA allow for the assessor to ask any questions regarding the assessment observation? So hopefully there's a two-way street between the assessor and the qualified IQA that there's an opportunity for the assessor to ask some questions there. And finally, did the candidate IQA ask the assessor to sign and date the observation form and any other relevant material as well? So that's where the, the observation comes full circle. Uh, and hopefully the candidate IQA has asked the assessor to sign and date the observation report and perhaps has given the assessor some targets as well. Now we have three remaining boxes um, to complete. So this is the, the candidate IQA feedback. Okay, this is to be completed by the candidate IQA. So for this section, the candidate IQA must write how they found the observation. So when they observe the assessor, um, how did they find that process? So they obviously have made that observation and provided feedback to the assessor. So it's finding out about the candidate IQA and how did they perform. So the candidate IQA uh, must think about the, the observation, uh, what went well for them, okay, and what could be improved um, in their future practice as well. So that's them reflecting on the, the observation there. And then we have the qualified IQA feedback to the candidate IQA. For this section, the qualified IQA must provide the candidate IQA with their overall feedback. Uh, for example, the qualified IQA can pick out one to two or even three strengths from the observation. What did the candidate IQA do well? OK, for example, it could be putting the assessor at ease. It could be that the candidate IQA was objective during the observation. Perhaps they gave constructive uh, feedback to the assessor as well. So it's just providing um, some some feedback to the candidate IQA for their future practice there. So the strengths and any areas for development. Finally, we have the candidate IQA action plan. Uh, this is to be completed by the qualified IQA, um, and this is providing the candidate IQA with some targets to improve their, their future practice. So, for example, the candidate IQA could perhaps chair a standardization meeting. That's going to really help to, to bolster their confidence within their IQA role. The candidate IQA could shadow fellow IQAs to gain a greater understanding of uh, the role of an IQA, or even the candidate IQA uh, could review any internal policies and procedures to really help their practice there. And we also have uh, the, the sign-off uh, section. So the candidate IQA undertaking the IQA qualification must sign and date that section there. The qualified IQA, um, completing the form, must sign and date the form there. And of course, we've got the train aid uh, signature and date section there for when we receive the observation report. Um, so this is the, um, the, the, the very much the two page um, observation document to be completed by the qualified IQA. Uh, hopefully this is nice and clear. Uh, once again, this document can be printed, it can be handwritten, or it can be typed as well. Okay, so the observation should be a maximum of an hour, no more than that. But once again, the candidate IQA must 
um, observe the assessor within their assessing or teaching role as well. So this is going to be in the presence of learners. OK, hopefully you've found this video uh, useful. This is criteria number nine um, of the, the IQA qualification. Just remember that you have two observations. Uh, you must observe each assessor once, but one of the uh, one of the two um, uh, observations must be observed by that qualified IQA as well. That is it for today's video. Thank you very much for, for watching. Um, if you do have any questions at all uh, about the observation, please do get in contact uh, with the team. Bye for now.